Hi, how you doing? So over the last couple of days, I've been building this thing. This is a mechanical motor controller for brushless DC motors. And it's going to take a little bit of talking about. It's going to take a little bit of talking about because I am committing heresy. I am suggesting that a mechanical solution is better than an electronic solution in some circumstances. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. And I'm expecting an awful lot of kickback from that. Now, what it is, obviously, is a commutator. It's just an external commutator. Brushless DC motors really grew up with things like PC fans. And when they're really small and they pull a very low amount of energy, then the commutation electronically makes a lot of sense. It reduces the size of the motor, it gives the motor a longer lifespan, there's no brush wear, etc, etc, etc. And you find them taking over the market in that field for those reasons. Now my contention is that silicon works really, really well for switching at low power. When you start to put some serious power in there, then the silicon really can't cope that well. And it quickly goes up in price. So if I want a motor controller for a brush and DC motor that's tiny, like a fan, just like a computer fan, it's going to cost me cents to build that motor controller out of silicon. And that's what happened. Now, because it was so good, and because it was so cheap, these things just got bigger and bigger. And you started finding them in things like washing machines. And then, of course, we started finding them in things like electric vehicles. Now, that probably draws uh, 100 watts or so. It probably says on the back, actually. Very little. That'll draw a couple of hundred watts. An electric vehicle, of course, draws kilowatts of power. Now, at that level, the silicon needed to cope with that kind of power is stupidly expensive. If I want to buy an electronic speed controller for that, a couple of cents. But for this thing, I'd probably use something like that, two or three pounds. Well, actually, that's a fiver. Not that much. Uh, and that will last forever. And of course, that brings the price down of those motors. But the minute I start going into real power, then you start paying stupid money. The controller for that Twizy is a Sevcom. I forget which gen, but I looked up the prices and they start about £400 or so. They can go up to over £1,000 for those controllers. And they have to do that because the amount of power that's going through. And my contention is silicon can't really cope with that power very much. Actually, I think that's one of the reasons we still have things like contactors, relays, um, thyrotrons. Because the really high power stuff has to go through something mechanical, can't go through something silicon. Now, I'm sure people will argue with that. But that's just a belief that I have, which led to this. Because, of course, I want a controller for the Twizy, and I really don't want to spend four to five hundred pounds on that. So that cost me as a prototype to make somewhere around about ten pounds or so. Now it's mechanical, so it will wear out. But if you think about the average lifespan of a car, it's ten years. So if this lasted two years, which is the average lifespan of an electric motor, you'd need five of them. So you'd be spending about fifty pounds or so, as opposed to spending five hundred pounds. This could easily be made of clip-in modules, so it could just be part of your service routine. So my contention is, silicon can't handle high power very well, so it's expensive. Mechanical can be a good solution because it's a hell of a lot cheaper and really easy to repair. It's another thing that I really hate about motor controllers. That Sevcon, in order to adapt that Sevcon on the Twizy, I have to have a degree in electronics and a whole load of support gear to be able to do it. And I don't have that. So I don't like the confusion and the mystery surrounding this stuff. I like something direct that I can see and I can do myself. And that's exactly what that is. A mechanical controller is something you can get into, something you can change yourself. An electronic controller isn't. So there's lots of reasons why I'm interested in doing something like this. And there's lots of people who won't like that. But I like it that this is mechanical. Now this thing actually works. So let me give you a demonstration of it working. OK, so I've got my controller hooked up to a drill. We'd obviously use a small electric motor. And that's the 3D, uh, sorry, that's the brushless DC motor right there. Now, if I put some power on that and spin this. You can see that that motor was turning in tune with that one. Now this is a 240 volt motor, so it's just jiggling backwards and forwards, and it's also a tiny motor, so you might think, well, hey, you can do a little thing, but can it do a big thing? 
Well, uh, I've got an <laughs> adapted alternator here, which I've adapted to be a um, brushless motor. So let's hook that up. Okay, so what you need to keep your eye on is that spindle there. Now, my power supply only goes up to about three amps or so, so I don't expect anything too dramatic out of it, but you will see that spindle turning. There we go. I have to take that to 30 volts and it's cutting out because of the ampage, but you can see the spindle turning really clearly. Okay, I know this is a rough proof of concept, all right? That's all it is. But what we've got here, obviously, is a mechanical motor controller that controls some beefy motors where the rotation speed of here will link to the rotation speed of the output rotor. So what we control when we're controlling the speed is the speed of this very small motor, and that will control the speed of the very much larger motor with the limitation and amp draw being these brushes here. These are heavy duty brushes I put in here incidentally and they're meant to take, uh, well they're for a washing machine so they're meant to take quite a lot of amps at 240 volts. Now when I made the commutator I used a certain resin in there which is really coming off with the carbon so I need to remake that with a better resin but that commutator works absolutely beautifully. And the argument, remember, is that this mechanical commutator can handle the high power at a much cheaper price than the silicon. I'm saying that silicon is great for low amp signals, not so good for high power, which is why it turns out that silicon controllers for motors are extraordinarily expensive, where we can build a mechanical controller for a few dollars. Equally, we can build this controller. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.